So suitcases and trunks have been dragged around since the Egyptians. And the wheels have been used for moving things for over 5,000 years. Yet it wasn't until 1970 that Bernard Sadow asked the question, why don't suitcases have wheels? <laughs> Think about it. We put a man on the moon before we put wheels on a suitcase. <laughs> Now, was Sato a genius? No. He was someone frustrated by the way things were, and he decided to do something about it. Invention is the alchemy that turns frustration into innovation. Now, it may be in your nature to be an inventor, and it certainly can be learned, and it can be passed on from generation to generation, and it all starts with questioning everything. Now, back in the dark ages, you know, when televisions didn't have remote controls, <laughs> right? When pictures were in black and white, and you had to get out of your chair to change the channel or adjust the volume, that was the world my grandfather lived in. Can you imagine having to listen to every single commercial? <laughs> Think about it. The alternative was to walk across the room and turn off the volume or change to one of the other two channels. <laughs> now, those loud commercials annoyed my grandfather so much that he questioned the design of the television, and he decided to become a hacker. He took off the back of the box, spliced the wires with an extension cord with a toggle switch in the end, and he invented the first mute button. Now, that kind of thinking was passed on to me by my father. I can remember sitting around a dining room table with my dad, and he would take an everyday problem and challenge me to come up with a better solution. You know, what about this? What about that? My father had a small custom fabrication business where he worked with plastic and fiberglass pipes. Now, the plastic pipes had certain strengths and weaknesses, and the fiberglass pipes had other strengths and weaknesses. My father would often wonder why you couldn't have the best of both. Nobody had ever bonded those materials together to make a pipe before, and he asked, why not? So after a couple years of development, he actually created a bonded fiberglass plastic composite pipe, and he got it patented. The inside of the pipe had plastic for chemical resistance, and the outside had fiberglass that gave it strength. Now, unfortunately, my father passed away at age 48 before he had a chance to see his product have a commercial success. At age 21, I was watching a news broadcast about a toxic waste site called Love Canal. Thousands of people had unknowingly built their homes on top of a toxic waste site. And to make matters worse, Leaking 55-gallon drums of waste were literally popping up out of the ground. Now, the broadcast showed them taking those leaking steel drums and overpacking them into larger steel drums. What would an inventor have said looking at that broadcast? Wow, is that dumb. You're taking a leaking steel drum and you're putting it into a larger steel drum that's going to leak as well. There has to be a better way. How many times have you asked that? There has to be a better way. Certainly, there was a lot of people that saw that broadcast and probably came to the same conclusion that I did. Why don't they make those larger drums out of a different material? Now, a lot of would-be inventors have an idea, but they never do anything with it. And it would have been a lot easier for me to simply congratulate myself on coming up with an idea, but then go right back to watching the broadcast and never acting on it. But that's not the kind of thing that's going to happen if you want to be an inventor. So I ended up uh, trying to go ahead and, and, and do something about it. I mean, there's nothing special about me. 
I just graduated from college with a degree in economics. <laughs> I had no money. I was just married. And I decided I was going to save the world from toxic waste and build a drum that would never leak. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. But my new wife, Dale, was super supportive, and the journey began. So the first thing I had to work on was materials. Now, I can thank my dad because I ended up using his plastic fiberglass composite for the drum. So now I could turn my attention to the lid. And the conventional way to seal a lid at that time was a steel hoop ring with a bolted closure. Now, that was going to rust and fail. So the same questions I was asking about the drum, I had to ask about the lid, how to make it leak proof. And then one morning it happened, a moment of inspiration, of divine guidance at breakfast. There I was looking into a toaster, and instead of seeing a way to toast bread, I saw those red glowing wires as a way to heat seal the lid onto the container. That was my eureka moment. And a eureka moment without action is the graveyard of ideas. So now I had a way to melt the plastic on the lid. Now, I'm not a particularly technical person, but I started stripping some wires and, and stripping extension cords. And my first attempts, let's just say I shorted out a lot of wires. <laughs> I did mention I had no idea what I was doing, right? So I kept at it, and I eventually learned I could reduce the electrical load by taking the bare wires and wrapping it around an upside-down clay flower pot. And eventually, I got the product to work. That was my first patentable invention, and I dubbed it macro encapsulation. I took resistance wire, and I embedded it into the lid, hooked it up to a control unit. You pushed one button, electrical current went around the lid, melted the plastic onto the flange of the drum, and entombed the waste. That is now a authorized treatment by the US EPA. So, <laughs> was that for me or the EPA? <laughs> I hope it was for me. So you need to question everything and then act on the most likely answers. Now, I'm not an engineer, but that process has resulted in more than 60 patents for me. And a majority of those have been commercialized. Now, one problem that we have is that most of us accept things for the way they are. Oh, we get annoyed by them, and we complain, but we still accept them. And that is the problem that we have to unleash ourselves from. Think of all the millions of people that carried around suitcases for centuries and never thought about the need for wheels. Bernard Sato did more than complain. He asked, why not? Inventors are always asking, why not? Why not a rolling suitcase? Why not wheels? Why not a new way to store toxic waste? How many of you have seen a product and thought to yourself, hey, I had that idea first? It's happened to me, it's happened to you, and I hate it when that happens. <laughs> but it happens to me far less than it used to, because now when I have a good idea, I act on it. History has shown us that there can be many people who come up with a solution to a problem at the same time, but only one actually act on it. Or maybe several people act on it, but only one persists. And persistence is the key. There is no overnight success. Inventing is a marathon, not a sprint. And if you have a good idea, and you act on it, and you add in persistence, you have a real shot at being a successful inventor. That first why not launched my business, allowed me to develop over 400 new products and several successful add-on businesses. Why not? is truly the mother of invention. Now, there's more to being an inventor that we could talk about today, but at least you have a formula. Ask why not, act, and persist. 
Now, I'd like to share with you a technology I get to play with. What do you see when you look at this? A white canvas? What if you put your inventor's mind to it? This could be a solution to an idea that's been, and a problem that's been bugging you for years. It could be a, a business based on your idea. Now, at this point, I was hoping to throw a bucket of paint on this and give you a big reveal. But apparently, there's $200,000 worth of electronics underneath this floor. <laughs> and there's an old man about this high that is not going to let me throw paint. <laughs> so earlier to, today, to, to, to launch the program in the other hall, I threw paint on this, and they videotaped it. So just remember that you get to see what happened earlier. Just remember that this could be anything. So this is what I wanted to do. Got to get the G. So what do you think it's going to say? <laughs> I'd like to buy a vowel. How about a uh, N? So anyhow, the fun part about this, it takes a while. But the bad part about it is they didn't have a while to wait. So they had to get this off the stage and clean it up. So what you're going to say, oh, there comes a T. And I'd like to solve the puzzle. And that was the result. Thank you. Thank you.